How's it going? Welcome back to Collider Mailbag. This is the laid back show where we just talk about things you want to know about. You guys have sent in emails at Collider Video. We've gone through them. We've picked them out. And we're going to discuss it. We've got a cool crew to do it. Had a lot of fun with these guys so far. First, the Zeng Master, Dennis Zen. What's up, man? I'm happy to be here, and I'm excited for the UFC fight later tonight. You're pretty psyched about yeah, it. Yeah, McGregor versus Diaz is two trash talkers just going at it. You were wrong last week. You said you said Silva was going to beat Bisbing. Who do you got this week? Uh, I have McGregor, but I could be wrong again. Right. Um, and also joining us, Natasha Martinez, ET hater. How are you? <laughs> Great. Thank you. <laughs> Great. Um, loved Natasha's shirt. Got to get myself one. It was the garbage shirt. Man, yes. man, the person that came up with that. Um, okay, <laughs> so let's get into the the emails you guys have been sending. Natasha, what's first? Andreas Iliopoulos writes, Hello, Collider. What do you think about the possibility that Fox and Marvel actually made a deal over the Fantastic Four and that they are keeping it a secret for Infinity War and maybe have Silver Surfer show up or something. The Fantastic Four situation is getting more and more annoying for me because I really believe Marvel could do great things with them and the supporting characters that would follow. Um, I don't think they have a deal. I think we would have heard a little bit more about it if there was a deal in the works or had been talking about it because even when the Spider-Man thing, there was kind of like rumblings that that was happening and then, you know, we, we speculated. Some people thought yes, some people thought no, and then eventually... It happened. Um, in regards to Fantastic Four, no, I think that had Deadpool not worked, then maybe having a conversation with Marvel is something they would have done because we talked about that yesterday on Movie Talk was that Fox has been trying to do the shared universe and they were going to do it with Fantastic Four and they were going to do it with X-Men together and Fantastic Four didn't work, obviously. So uh, they're able to do that now with Deadpool. So I don't think they necessarily need to do that yet with Fantastic Four. Um, but I think the rights eventually go back to Marvel if they don't do another movie after a couple of years. But I might be wrong. Yeah, yeah. If they don't do another Fantastic Four, I don't know what the, the year is. But by a certain time, then the rights do revert back to Marvel. And that might happen. But I don't think they're going to revert in time for them to actually utilize those characters in Infinity, Infinity War. Right. I would love to see it happen just because in the comic books, uh, in the Infinity Gauntlet storyline, Silver Surfer plays a huge part. Not Fantastic Four so much, but Fa Silver Surfer plays an integral part into that story. I'd like to see that happen. It'd be great if it, there was some sort of secret they're keeping under wraps and then bam, when, and, you know, when they show a trailer or something, he shows up, but highly doubtful, especially because you know, people have talked about how Fox and Marvel do not have the same type of relationship right. that Sony and Marvel do. Well, yeah, well, and Sony, remember, Sony was in trouble with Spider-Man, and Sony didn't really have much uh, that they could do with Spider-Man anymore, so they kind of had to. And not that Fox isn't in trouble with Fantastic Four, but they're not in trouble overall, because that's all Sony had. Yeah. Fox has... Deadpool now and they have the X-Men franchise so there's no there's no reason for them to be desperate to try to sell off Fantastic Four they could do it if they wanted to and made themselves a deal but they Sony kind of had to do it mm -hmm. um, but as far as Silver Surfer goes look I'd love to see the Silver Surfer man I, I actually thought he looked cool in that silly ass Tim Story version but it's they they just haven't been able to been done right at all personally I think the Fantastic Four needs about 10 years off I think that they, the, like, and I want to see him. I'm a Fantastic Four fan. I was very excited to see this movie. I just think with the amount of superheroes that we have coming and the amount of stuff that Fox has, has and Marvel has to introduce a lot of different characters and continue on their storylines right now because they're still, bringing, they're still going to introduce Black Panther and Spider-Man and, and Captain Marvel and all these characters that I, I just, I don't know right now if Fantastic Four needs to happen right now. Do you think? Do, do you no, think because Marvel's not hurting. I mean, that's right. the thing is all their movies that they've made have made money. Not all of them are huge blockbusters, but they've all made money. So they're not like, oh, we need Fantastic Four back. And, and I mean, I, I think I think Kevin Feige had a comment a few weeks ago or maybe a few months ago about how he was actually much more interested in those peripheral characters yeah. like Silver Surfer or Galactus or anything else as opposed to Fantastic Four themselves. That could be the interesting thing, though. I mean, going back to the viewer's question is that what if they buy the rights so they can get those characters? You know, what if they buy them back or, get, or make a deal to get them back? You never know with Marvel. They could they could sneak it out and, and pull it out, but I I would just guess and say no, but I wouldn't be opposed to it if it happens. 
All right, Natasha, what's next? Ryan Barker writes, Hey, guys and gals, I'm a huge fan of the show. I was wondering if Conor McGregor wins this weekend and continues to cement his legacy in the MMA world, would you guys like to see a biopic of his life? He has a pretty interesting story, and I think it could make for great cinema. I was thinking Charlie Hunnam as Conor and Chris Pratt as Dana White with Antoine Fuqua directing. Thoughts? I'll let Dennis take this one. Well, I've been watching fight later tonight i you know i'm a conor mcgregor fan i don't i think it's too early would i like to see one maybe down the line but i mean his his career is so it just started i mean i know he's he's really big right now but it's one of those things where we at least in the public eye we haven't seen him face any type of obstacles yet i mean what what is the story going to be obviously you know he he comes from from a a place where it's like he, he started out you know not well known and all that stuff but we haven't seen anything in the public. Has he hasn't lost yet? There's just certain things we want to see in that type of story that haven't come come yet. So I, I think waiting maybe ten years from now, like I think that's more appropriate. I mean, even the the Ronda Rousey thing that we've talked about on Movie Talk several times, I think that's too early as well. I think so too. I mean, you look perfect example as they were talking about that before she lost. Yeah. She's got a lot more chapters in her life before you you write a movie, too. Is there a great beginning? Absolutely. But we don't know what else is going to happen with her life. And I agree with you 100% in regards to Connor. It's that too young don't in his career, in his life, to really know. Not that he doesn't have an interesting story, but there's so much more to develop with him, too. I, if there was going to be an MMA guy that I'd want to see right now... There's two guys, and that's Frank Mir, and that's Randy Couture. Those are two guys I think that if you're going to do movies about their lives, they're right. They've had the Frank Mir, you know, near, was the youngest, one of the youngest heavyweight champions, and he, and he almost dies, has come back, and 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 winds up winning, albeit the interim championship. Interesting story, and then you have Randy Couture, obviously oldest champion, the stuff that he's done in his career, but. I don't necessarily know if there are any particular fighters that MMA fighters right now that need a movie about them too like i don't there, there's a lot of them that because the sport ufc in general is a very young sport yeah. still it, it really it hasn't it didn't really progress into what it is now until about 2005 when the mm-hmm. ultimate fighter championship when the, when the tv show started yeah. that's really when the mainstream started coming in and and they were able to get more money behind it and, and it, it, it's evolved and the stories of the fighters are still really being told yeah i'd actually rather see a story about the formation of the mm-hmm. ufc instead because mm-hmm. they had a document about that and that was much more fascinating because then you actually saw like how it started and like how it was no one wanted it people like john mccain were against it it was just this little kind of thing kind of underground thing and almost kind of had like a maybe not illegal but like almost taboo you know stigma attached to it and then now it's mainstream you got budweiser reebok you have all these people like big names behind it it's overtaken boxing as a combat sport it really it really has so um yeah, I, I agree with you. I think I'd, uh, to the, the story of the UFC would be something I'd be very interested in. And there's only been, in my opinion, one really great MMA movie so far that's gotten it right, and that's Warrior. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, what's next? Dan Salisbury writes, Hey, Collider crew. I've been a big fan since before you moved to Collider and look forward to anything you guys do. I was wondering what your view is on watching critically bad movies. I personally only watch movies that have a good rating on sites like IMDb or Rotten Tomatoes, but do you think watching bad movies is needed to get better appreciation for the good ones? I know all film is subjective, but I wonder if I'm missing out in some ways by not experiencing the garbage. Thanks and keep up the awesome. <laughs> Some work you guys are doing. Um, I do actually think you need to, if you if you're a, a, a fan love a film lover and you want to watch movies and you just want opinions and you want to do what we do or you just want a, a better film knowledge. I think you do have to watch the bad ones for sure. I mean, I certainly do. Um, even I mean, for me, a lot of the times is. Oh man, I missed that one, and it could be on my stink box of the year. So I gotta, I gotta, I gotta go back and watch it. And I'm either pleasantly surprised, or it fits the stinky expectations, and I'm watching the shit rats. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but I, I um, yeah, I do, th- I do think that that helps you understand, like, oh well, because when you're watching a really bad movie, and you're like, oh, I wish so and so would have done this movie, because if so, then you probably would have got the better dialogue here, or a better shot here, or this. You do compare the styles, and I think that it's, it is it is important to, it, it helps your film memory. So I, I think it's important. For me, it's it depends on what your interest is in movies. Are you just a movie fan that enjoys and wants to be entertained? Then I think, right. no, you don't really have to see the bad movies. You just go to the ones that you, you're interested in, and hopefully you see 
mostly good ones. Right. But if you have, if your job or you're much more interested in learning about either filmmaking or learning how to analyze and critique films, then yeah, you definitely need to watch the bad ones. Cause if you watch the bad ones, you'll see what the issues are in terms of like, you know, maybe the, the dialogue's not very good or the story structure is not good and all that stuff. But that's only if you have that type of interest to. I think to, to film that. lovers too, though. Yeah, like film, film lovers. But yeah. if you, yeah, if you want to appreciate on that level, but if you just want entertainment, right. then yeah, you don't need to watch the bad. No, ones. why torture yourself? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But for for us, we enjoy watching. I mean, you went to go see Gods of Egypt, the, yeah, you know, I even though to. you knew you weren't gonna like it because right. you wanted to say, hey, I need to speak on this. I need to see what what was actually wrong with this movie why why did it not work and and, and that's you know what kind of what we do so it, i think it can only help us it is because it's also you want to you want to go and be able to be part of the conversation obviously too you also want to but i'm also so i think some of the times too it depends on the genre of film that you want to see because for me i i'm rooting for this is something we talked about again yesterday on on movie talk is that I want those classic sword and sandals and epic films mm -hmm. to come back. I want them to be great. So I'm still going to see them, even if I hear that it's bad, with the hope that, well, I like that one. I want That's the one I, I you guys, I, I don't know what everyone was talking about, but everyone was right on that one. Um, <laughs> so yeah, but I do think that you should go, depending on the situation, like Dennis said, um, but bad movies are sometimes important. And then you're talking about also with the critics rating too. Don't avoid something just because it's critically panned. Right. Because sometimes you'll watch something and maybe you'll enjoy it. I would say I'd agree most of the time. Like if something's Rotten Tomatoes where it's like certified rotten, most of the time I probably will agree with that. Right. However, there are those, you know, exceptions. And, mm -hmm. and so if you're actually interested in seeing a movie, you definitely should check it out regardless of the rating and i also think that there's times too you, you know regardless of, of who you maybe there's someone you want to see in the movie maybe you hear it's a bad movie but you like the particular actor actress or there's an up-and-coming person that you want to see there are people that you know starting out their careers are in bad movies or sometimes really great performances get stuck in bad movies you know so it's, it's still good to see if you're again going into you're a student of film or, stu or just a fan of movies to watch what a great actor does in a crappy movie like we were talking about Julianne Moore mm -hmm. who most of the time does not phone it in but we saw a really bad movie Seventh, Seventh Son, Son to where she was phoning it in and that's the one for me now I know that I can make that reference I'm sure she wouldn't be happy that I'm making that <laughs> reference but that's the one time I've ever seen her like if anyone ever said who are those people who never phone it in? I say Tom Cruise never phones it no, in. No, never. Tom Hanks never, never phones it in. Um, those are the like those are two that I thought of right now. Oh, Kate Winslet, I don't think mm -hmm. ever phones it in. Those are those are actors and actresses. But then again, I might see some crap bomb that they're in, and I, and I might change my opinion on that. So well, also uh, speaking of Rotten Tomatoes, like a movie was it last year? Entourage that had right. a, a, a rotten, certified rotten. Score. I enjoyed that I did movie, too. and I liked it. As a fan of the show, I thought it. It, it, it was faithful to that and I actually think I will say it, it was a good movie to me it was a real it was you know what it was it was a really good hour and a half episode of the show yeah that's what it was if you're a fan of that show that's why I never understood people were just crapping on that movie because they weren't fans of the show and that's fine yeah. um, but I don't think it was fair to judge that movie as anything except <laughs> an hour and a half episode it was just my dad who's like a was like a diehard fan of Entourage mm -hmm. was like yeah it was a good episode that was it. So, <laughs> did you see Entourage the movie? I did not see Entourage, okay. but I do think it is like important to be well rounded, and especially if you're one of those people that are just like complaining about things, and then someone asks you like, "Well, what would you do differently?" Like, if you didn't watch it, you don't know how to like assess it and be like, "Well, I would do this and that." But, and I think it's important to be a part of the conversation too. Right. Yeah. All right. What's next? Nicholas Sergi writes, Hey, Collider Movie Talk, Jedi Cancel, Heroes, and the Commentaries. I love it all. So I want you folks at the table to settle this. Weigh in on every avenue on this one. Ooh. Stallone or Schwarzenegger? Later. I picked pick this one just for you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have to tell you, this is not a fantastic question. <laughs> if you look at the study of the career, it doesn't even matter. Sly Stallone, nominated for an Oscar, who cares? I was the governor. I was the governator. There's so much that I'm able to do, able to do now. You can't even see it. I'm lifting stuff up with my imagination. Um, uh, yeah, I, I, as far as uh, who's who, better right now, I mean, Stallone. Yeah. Stallone's got it right now. The guy who's just nominated for an Oscar. He's producing hit movies, whatever you thought about The Expendables 1, 2, and 3. They made money. Rambo, the last, Rambo made money. Um, the Rocky rebooted the Rocky franchise. You don't get Creed without Rocky Balboa. 
So uh, overall, you got to you have to take in consideration the twilight of their career and Stallone has come on strong at the end here. Uh, the Rocky franchise to me is some, is one of my best, one of the best franchise five doesn't exist. Um, and then you have the Rambo franchise. You have step or my mom will shoot. Mm. Uh, that one was not so good, but you know, you have you tango and cash, uh, Cobra, um, so many movies that he's done in the past, but then Schwarzenegger, the early part of Schwarzenegger, you know, Commando, Predator, Running Man, Terminator, Terminator. Uh, yeah, it's, it's uh, True Lies. So many great movies, and because he's got that personality, Schwarzenegger had Stallone beat in the. In, Stallone had a great personality. Stallone with with his doesn't get enough credit with how funny he is in regards to you ever, when you interview the guy. He is quick. He, he he's really he, he's slick, um, but on screen. Conan the Barbarian, obviously another one, but but Arnold was able to pop that personality, the one-liners. Nobody could deliver. Hey Bennett, uh, it was <laughs> all that stuff. My, my I have my daughter saying it now. It's just like uh, see you at the party, Richter. Like, he's got the guy's two arms. Like it's it's amazing. Like, you know, blow off some steam, Bennett. That was a line. But he uh, he can really pull off those one-liners now as he gets a little older. They don't work as much. So I'm going to give the edge to Stallone because of what Stallone has done in the last nine or ten years. So so right now, if you could only watch one of those actors' movies, which one would you pick? Ooh, man. That means I have to cut Predator out of my life. Terminator. Cut Terminator. Commando. But, but if I don't, then I lose the Rocky yeah. franchise. I lose the Rambo franchise. I lose Creed and the possibility of Creed 2. <laughs> Man, I hate to do this, but um, Schwarzenegger, hasta la vista, baby. I'm taking Stallone. You're taking <laughs> Stallone. Stallone. Okay, Stallone. yeah, it, it's it's a tough question. I mean, both of them done great work. I I think uh, one of the underrated uh, Stallone movies is Oscar. Do you remember that movie? Yeah, it was, <laughs> it's, I like that Marissa movie. Tomei. Yeah, it's it's like one of those kind of almost like a play type yeah. of comedy. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's tough. Uh, I. I think I'm going to take Stallone for the same reasons, just because I, he's a better actor than Arnold. You know, yeah. he 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 can deliver those dramatic performances. We've seen in Rocky, Rocky, the first Rambo, which people forget, is actually a very good dramatic film, and obviously what we just saw in the latest Creed. Arnold Schwarzenegger had a one of his best performances in a movie that didn't do very well lately, and that was Maggie. Mm -hmm. He was really good in Maggie, and it was the best acting he's ever done but i agree stallone is the better actor and it was certainly showed now i understand where people can go well he's been playing rocky balboa for so long i don't care who how long he's been playing him to be able to emotionally attach to a character that way the way he did in that locker room scene and the way he did at the very end and just the way that he was able to mentor creed was an amazing performance uh, and uh, actors in general so uh yeah stallone but i will give schwarzenegger the edge I think if there's a comedy that comes out, I'll go. I yeah. like Kindergarten Cop. Twins. Yeah, I, I'd go with Schwarzenegger. Yeah, he's. That, that's what I mean. Is that in he's been able to pull it off because even that horrible ass jingle all the way. Um, <laughs> he, when there's there's moments in that there's things that he says and and last action hero look an elephant like you know all, <laughs> yeah. all, all, all these things that he's able to do. It's just that accent the way he's able to he's a charming dude like even when he was running for office and he's he's what did he say to Huffington he's like there's so many holes in that story I can drive my Hummer through it like <laughs> oh, like great lines and he, he can really pull off comedy. I picked Schwarzenegger for your impressions. Thank you. Thank you. Um, <laughs> All right, what's next? Chris Niddle writes, Actors like Mickey Rourke and Robert Downey Jr. have had slumps in their careers and come back. Even Michael Keaton disappeared for a long time, and now he has been in two best pictures. What do you all think will happen to with Nicolas Cage? He was Oscar-worthy in the past and used to be a star, but recently only seems to do straight-to-DVD movies. Do you think the upcoming USS Indianapolis Men of Courage movie could be a comeback for him? And if not, what kind of movie would it take to get him back in the spotlight? What other actors previous a actors have gone to b movies that you wish would come back for me it's cuba gooding jr well uh, lots to talk about in that yeah. question um nicholas cage the problem with nicholas cage is he does everything he does it's the it's the running joke is that yeah. if he picks it fine i'll do it yeah it's like every movie the snl sketch with uh any any samberg yeah. yeah he does he does everything so it's like the problem is when you hear he does a movie you're like Ugh, and it's horrible and, and you don't even know what it was and he's when that movie that he just did recently which the movie was okay but he was great and it was joe 
He was great in Joe. But the but people probably thought it was some ridiculous direct to Blu-ray thing. The movie was fine, but still his performance was worth watching. And he comes out with a movie like it's like every three weeks. It's <laughs> it's unbelievable the stuff that comes out. Some of his movies are so fun to watch when they're really bad, like knowing. Oh my God! I got so many laughs out of the movie. It's so stupid. And then the other one was um, what was that really horrible one that he did? Oh, everything. Uh, Ghost Rider Two was was atrocious. He just does so many bad movies that it's hard for him to come back. Because and I I think that I don't want to say that he's nuts. That's not fair to say because I don't know the man. But but you hear things that like he's a little difficult to work with mm -hmm. here and there. And um. But yeah, I don't know. That's let's let's get the Nicolas Cage part, and then we'll come back to the actors we wish to come back. What do you, what do you think? With well, Nicolas Cage, I mean, he's obviously a talented actor. Mm -hmm. He won an Oscar. He was great in Leaving Las Vegas, uh, Matchstick Men, Adaptation, even more recently in uh, Kick Ass. Right. Uh, but it, it, you're right. It's about choices. It's about what what they say. It's not what you say yes to, it's what you say no to. And he right. needs to say no more yep. often. He's yep. going to be like, oh, no, I'm not going to do because. As much as people don't want to hear this, an actor, it, you're a brand. So if you're doing all these crappy movies, you're going to be associated with crappy movies. And then no one else wants to hire you. And that ruins your brand. And that's what happened to him. So he doesn't yeah. have the choice. People are not going to offer him, you know, all these great roles for him anymore. It takes respect. It takes validity away from their from their movies it, it takes credit away from it. Like if you see if you see Nicolas Cage in it, and like I said before, you hear you go. Psst. And it's like a serious movie. He's not doing Leaving Las Vegas anymore. Like, like that's back when he's doing movies like that. Because he said, look, he was great in Kick-Ass. Mm -hmm. He was great in that movie. He probably stole the whole entire movie. He's The guy has it in him to be a great actor. So I don't know as far as him being able to make a comeback. Uh, I, we'll see. What kind of roles would you like to see Nicolas Cage make? Or what Take roles on. hasn't he done? He's done everything. <laughs> I mean, he guys probably or played a toaster. Or stay away from. <laughs> um, <laughs> like, how does he come back? He needs to associate and get with, I, I, I don't know him and his network of friends Tarantino. and friendships and re relationships with other Hollywood. No, but find talented directors, talented writers and, f and say, hey man, like, you know, I really want to like do something different than what I've been doing. Can you, you know, well, do you have anything for me? That type of thing. I think it's, you know, cultivating me. I don't, I don't know who he's like good friends with, but right. find, find someone like that. Yep. Mm -hmm. All right. Now moving on to the, uh, the actors and actresses that we need to, that we'd like to see have a comeback a la, you know, uh, John Travolta. Mm -hmm. Who do you, who would you like to see make a comeback? Well, he mentioned Cuba Gooding Jr. And he's in that people versus OJ show right now, which Curtis is getting good, right? really, yeah, he's yeah. good in it. He plays OJ Simpson. That's getting critical buzz. So maybe that will help him get away from that. Like snow dogs. And what are, what are all that? Like, it's like that Oscar curse, right? Like Boat people, trip. people get Oscars and then suddenly they're in like a bunch of crappy movies. Yeah. Uh oh, Leo. Um, so get hopefully Leo he and comes snow back. Dogs. <laughs> yeah, snow dogs. <laughs> and, um, this person is not, he didn't go do B movies, but I thought he would have been a lot bigger. And he, he was leading films for a while was Clive Owen. He, yeah. He's doing great work on the Nick right now. You know, he was in Children of Men. He, I even liked him in that uh, kind of like action slash comedy shoot him up. Mm -hmm. He's an actor. I just like, this guy could be a big, big star. He didn't get that James Bond gig, but I felt like they could have, he could have been huge. Uh, so I'd like to see him make a, kind of comeback i don't know if colin farrell really counts because he's still in the spot he's still in I, the spotlight. I, would, I would say that that counts because colin farrell to me he was leading like big budget in the movies beginning was he's one of the he's such a great actor he just he can't catch a break i mean because like when it comes to not as far as getting roles but as far as like staying like getting noticed saving mr banks mm -hmm. That dude should have been nominated for an Oscar in that movie. He was the best part about the movie. Sorry, Tom Hanks. Colin Farrell is the best part about that movie. True Detective season two, which was definitely not yeah, loved. No, he was great in the show. He's he's always there. Was a really horrible movie that came out where it was like he stuck in the past and went to the future. And had Winter's this, Tale. Oh my! Perry Lord. was just talking about it's, how much she likes watching it because she hates it it's it's really a bad movie but a, he is really good in it so i'd like to see him do some more stuff i think a comedic actor that needs to come back is mike myers mm -hmm. he's kind of disappeared off the face of the earth um after that horrible love guru which understandably it, it wasn't that bad to make him disappear off the face of the earth um i mean it was bad um julia roberts mm -hmm. julia roberts has not had i think i'm making a prediction i think julia roberts is going to find 
or strive again, but I think it's going to be in TV. I think it's going to be either a Netflix series or something along those lines. Um, and I think she, that's where we're going to see her kind of emerge again as a big star, and it's going to happen on TV. So, um, th- yeah, I think those are the ones that I'm thinking. And Winona Ryder mm-hmm. is one that she kind of pops up here and there, but I think another person that could probably live in the TV space. So those are the ones that I'm uh, that I'm thinking. Kurt about. Russell's making a semi comeback in a way, like he had. Uh, he was in Fast and or Fast and Furious Seven, sure, sure. and then he did a Bone Tomahawk, and then he was just in Hateful Eight. So maybe he'll start showing up more. There's one other person we forgot. Who? We just talked about. Oh, uh, Arnold. Yeah, yeah. Ar- Arnold needs to have a, a comeback as well too, because Arnold, um, he, he, man, that the last Terminator. He was the best part about the last Terminator for sure. I, you liked it I think, a little more than I did. Yeah, uh, it's not like I, I didn't think it was a great move or anything. I didn't. I just didn't hate it like other people did. Yeah, it I definitely just, needed work. Yeah. But, yes. but I, I wouldn't mind seeing him come back. But, I mean, you know, maybe if he hooked up with James Cameron, who, you know, we all know is very talented, maybe that, he does a new movie. You can get that King Conan movie going, man. Like, yeah. the thing's been going on, for, talking about it forever. So, all right, what's next? Nick Moore writes, hey, Collider crew, I love your videos. I have a Star Wars question for you. Do you think that Disney will eventually start creating completely new stories told in different galaxies that have nothing to do with the original canon? Thanks, and congrats to Dennis on his promotion and the Schmoes for their merge with Collider. Keep up the great work. Well, thank you very much very nice of you um i don't think that will happen no they, they've made it very clear that they want to continue this brand new canon that's why they wiped out all the what was formerly known as legends and what that means is that any books that came before around the 2014 uh period those were wiped out and not and pretty much retconned as far as being canon although they were never really officially canon these books now and these comics and these movies now are <laughs> Excuse me. So um, I think that any movies that they that they do are going to, is going to play into all those timelines that they're that they're that's that's what they're doing. That's the reason why they're doing this, so they can have. And it would get too confusing then, because I think that it's similar to what if you started doing that in the movies, it's it would be as if they were making different movies. Like, well, so does that fit into this? And that doesn't wait. So how does that work? Don't even bring those questions up. You know? Mm-hmm. How do you? Yeah, go- I mean, thanks for the congratulations. Um, yeah, then they're not going to do it. It's, it's because Disney's in the business of making money, and the best way to make money is to tie everything together. Right. So if someone t- says, oh, this is going to be a new story, and guess what? It has nothing to do with what's going on here, and it takes place in a different galaxy. Mm-hmm. No one's going to care. Um, even stuff like you're talking about Legends, so a game that you and me talk about all the time, Knights of the Old Republic, that is no longer canon. However, even that was set in the same universe just thousands and thousands of years earlier right. it's still tied into right what right. was going on uh in in the original trilogy and the prequels and all that stuff and then we have this new trilogy going on i, I don't see how, that's like doing like say uh, a marvel movie right and saying guess what this has nothing to do with anything that's going on right here right we're just going to make it it's, it's in a different galaxy and it lives on its own it's like might as well just create your own thing right why yeah. call it, why call it star wars then yeah it's true it's it just be it's it you're right it's a, it's a different it, you can still make a part of the universe if you make a separate story and i think that that's what they're going to really focus on is that you might see something that doesn't necessarily have to tie into the storyline yeah. but it still takes place in that universe yeah. all right what's next derek f walker jr writes what is the best deleted scene that you wish was actually put in the movie um, there's a couple I was looking up that I thought were interesting. I thought that there was um, there was a scene in uh, Harry Potter, Deathly Hallows Part One, where Dudley actually says goodbye to his cousin. And he makes he makes amends for for all the stuff that he had done in the past. And I I thought that would have been interesting to keep in there because it was a through line that there was really no res- resolution to that story. And I think that that would have been interesting. Um, there was there was some like there's another one i think that um what about the the luke lightsaber scene is that something you wish was in return of the jedi no i don't actually because i think that it it takes away from the reveal of um of luke showing up mm-hmm. because the first time cuz then you know that he's coming if you see that scene cuz it takes place beforehand with yeah. him and and also that part of that scene which is kind of silly is is vader's talking going luke, yeah yeah luke. i yeah it's really it's, 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 silly. it's, it's almost comedic it's almost prequel comedic right yeah. he's a luke yeah it's it's, luke. it's not it's he says not like good. eight times yeah no speaking <laughs> of um speaking of actually you know what by the way i don't know if that 
I might be wrong. I don't even know if that that I thought that I was looking up these deleted scenes. I don't know if that actually that can you look with that Harry Potter scene was was that actually part deleted? I think it was because I, I was looking at there was some kind of goof scenes mm-hmm. as well too. But I thought that was one that I I remembered. But um, the other one was uh, going back to the prequels. They they had in in Phantom Menace. There's a scene where you had Anakin was using the force to kind of set up it showed a little bit more how powerful he was and they took that out. i thought that would have been interesting there's more that i have to that i, I have to really mine go back research. is going to be from lord of the rings two towers oh, the yeah extended, I mean, extended cuts sure um the the boromir faramir denethor scene i i like it so much that i actually forget that it was not part of the theatrical release because it tells you so much about Boromir's character, Faramir's character, their relationship and how much they loved each other as brothers. Also, their relationship with their father, Denethor, who, you know, is just an asshole right, <laughs> in right. the movies. And then kind of like when you see Faramir in uh, Return of the King, when he goes out, you know, according to uh, being ordered by his father, you kind of get all that backstory that I saw in the extended edition definitely played better Seen, seen it beforehand so I think that's one that definitely should have made it in I know you're a big fan of yeah, Lord of the Rings I totally agree there's one del- or it's in the extended version too it has nothing to do with following the storyline I just love it it's when Aragorn throws an apple to Pippin and he's like oh second breakfast like that whole <laughs> thing about like what about first breakfast second breakfast it's like my favorite yeah I, I love those extended cuts they're I, better than I, the original cuts, I think yeah. too. Mm-hmm. Um, the other, the other scene um, that I was thinking about. Uh, shoot, I just, man, brain farting on this one. I had, I had a, shoot, I had a really good one in my head too, and I, for, I forgot it. It wasn't Lord Damn. of the Rings related. There was one Lord of the Rings scene though. In I think was it? Yeah, it was at the end of Two Towers that that was in the extended edition. I I'm glad they cut out was the <laughs> when they when they find them and they're just like kind of just smoking and like. With the tree, oh, yeah, like yeah, yeah. I, I didn't need all of that. I remember it. Sorry, brain fart. It was uh, it was Terminator Two mm-hmm. when Reese appears to Sarah Connor again in a vision, mm-hmm. and they cut it out because they think the reasoning was that they didn't. They, that Linda Hamilton, I think, actually convinced Cameron to take it. I think was because they wanted to show that she didn't need Reese anymore and that she was doing it on her own. But I thought it tied. Uh, Terminator 1 and Terminator 2 together well and it had a nice scene they actually shot with Michael Bean so that was one I always thought should have stayed in there there was an alternate ending to, to Terminator 2 as well was there? it was like a more happy ending is showing I think like them as a family or something like that where right. you know the Terminator 2 ends up with the, the road shot instead where where it's the voiceover of Linda Hamilton right. and Sarah Connor kind of more of a ambiguous and vague thing uh, okay what's next Brian Soder writes dear Dennis Christian and the whole Collider crew thank you all including John for all the great shows you do each day you have filled a void ever since we lost attack of the show from the G4 channel thank you for announcing all the new shows especially the horror and TV shows I would love to see a Collider sci-fi fantasy show covering everything sci-fi fantasy from Star Trek to Game of Thrones on TV and aliens to Warcraft in the cinema speaking of the late attack of the show you have given us back Chris Gore any chance we could get comic book guru Blair Butler to make some appearances she and Chris were two of the main attractions of that daily program back in the day thanks for all the awesomeness that you do Dennis well I was a big fan of attack of the show and I remember Blair Butler as well Uh, I personally don't know her I would love for her to come back uh, and, and make an appearance let's say on heroes or or movie talk or something like that you know we have to ask chris gore himself or schnepp and say hey you know why don't you you know see what she's doing see if she can come guest on there um in in terms of a sci-fi show uh that's something we definitely have talked about it's something that we're, we're interested in but right now with with all that's going on with the tv talk show the horror show with schmo down all the all the videos that we're doing upcoming it's it's definitely something we're thinking about but we can't really get solid and think about for another few months um, yeah, I think that as far as having Blair Butler on, we also have it. Forget, don't forget, we have we do have a former G four person on Jedi Council, and that's Tiffany Smith. Mm-hmm. Tiffany Smith was G four as well, so we have those connections for sure. And that, that's that's one of the things I think is so great with questions, like emails like that, and for the suggestions that you guys have given. Let us know who you want to see, whether it be on Movie Talk or compete in the Schmodown or be on Heroes or be on Jedi. 
we love to hear what you guys are saying and who you want to see. It helps us. It, it gives us a, a, you know, a chance to go out and, and meet some of these new people and get them on. That's one of the things that, that I'm, I'm doing over here, too, to take some stuff off of Dennis's plate as well, too, is that I'm trying to do a lot of that talent coordination, try to get some people on on the show and, and help develop, develop some shows with, with Dennis over here, too. So when you have suggestions, let us know, because I'm very excited, as you guys know, about the Schmodown trivia, because I even had a really exciting meeting yesterday that was like, whoa, if we can make that <laughs> matchup happen. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, if that thing happens, it's just, I'm not even going to, I would just tell you that if this particular thing happens down the line, you will lose your mind, and the Schmodown will be your favorite show on the planet. <laughs> um, I'm so excited for that, because what I think it's going to do, the Schmodown in general, be able to get you guys involved. You'll be answering the trivia questions on the computer as, and screaming at the at your laptop and phones, I'm sure. But it's also be able to see everyone here is going to be able to compete. We're going to have so many different fun matches. I'm really curious to see who you're going to go up against. I want to see who you're going to battle because I think you're going to be a lot tougher than you give yourself credit I, for. You know what? It'll be. It's going to be like any given day. What are the questions? It could be like, man, I, all these things are things I know about, or it could be like, oh man, I, I like something like horror. I'll be like, oh, I, I have no. Clue clue what you're, I just, you're asking me. I just gave you a nickname because of the, how, how mo you're the modest assassin. Yeah, yeah. The modest <laughs> Dennis, assassin. the modest assassin. Uh, but in speaking of getting talent, uh, besides just telling us, you guys should be tweeting. We've, we've done this before for Jedi yeah. Council mm -hmm. and Movie Talk. Tweet at the actual people. Like, find them. Like, yeah. if you want Blair Butler on the show, tweet at her. Say, hey, because uh, we just did a... Uh, Freddie Prince Jr. Freddie Prince Jr. And then uh, most recently, I know some people want uh, Grace Randolph on the Schmo down yes. or whatever. Yes, you know, what was funny about how Grace Randolph came about was that... So here's what happened with Grace, is that Grace Randolph, we, for... About five years, myself and Jeremy Johns and, and Mark, we put on the You Reviewers Awards, which was the YouTube um, award show. And we just, last year was our last year. Doing that, Grace Randolph was on for the second year. And then after that, I had reached out to her a few different times and I just had never heard back. And I was on Facebook Live and someone said, Hey, are you going to have Grace Randolph on? And I basically said that. I said, I'd love to, but I just haven't gotten in touch with her. She, she hasn't gotten back to me. Someone tweeted out to her, said, hey, we really want to see you on Collider. Mm -hmm. Can you reach out to Christian? She emailed me. And because of you guys, and we're going to, we'll, we'll get her, she's going to do the Schmodown next time she's in uh, LA. Yeah. So yeah. That, that that's helps. how it works. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's it today. I would like to thank the crew. First off, the modest assassin himself, Dennis Sang. Where can they find you? You guys can find me on Twitter at Think Hero, on Instagram, Dennis.TZNG. And we'll see you guys tomorrow for tomorrow's yeah. show. That's right. Natasha Martinez, where can they find you? You guys can find me on Instagram and Twitter at Natasha Lexis underscore. And for me, you can find me at Christian Harloff, Twitter and Instagram. Please go to my Facebook fan page. I do a lot of live streams from there. And uh, Jedi Council is every Thursday. Myself, John Campia, Tiffany Smith, and the Schmoes No Movie Show. It's coming back. The live show, the two-hour experience is coming back on Thursday, March 10th, and we are bringing back the Celebrity Impression Dating Game. It is coming back. Make sure if you've never seen it before, go and watch the playlist for the Schmoes No Show. It's on the Schmoes channel. Thank you so much. Make sure if you want to get your questions on Mailbag that you go to collidervideo at gmail.com and get your questions. Get them out there. Ask whatever you want. Let's get crazy. Great. Hey guys, if you like this video, click the thumbs up button. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at Collider.